On a fateful day in August 2016, a 911 call was made about a domestic dispute in an apartment building in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Little did the responding officers know that they were about to uncover a horrific crime that would shake the entire community to its core. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeigo, where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you. Now let's dive in. When the police arrived at the scene, they discovered something terrifying and wicked. A 10-year-old girl had been killed in cold blood. She was dismembered into several pieces. The remains of the little girl were wrapped in a blood-soaked blanket and were set on fire. It was a heart-wrenching sight that left the officers and investigators in shock and disbelief. Who's depraved enough to have not only killed an innocent little girl, but also dismembered it and set it on fire? This was truly something heinous. The investigators later discovered that the body was of Victoria Martin. The DNA found on Victoria Manson's body and the crime scene led to the arrest of her mother Michelle Martins, her boyfriend Fabian Gonzalez, and Gonzalez's cousin Jessica Kelly. All three of them were charged with first-degree murder, child abuse, tampering with evidence, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Further investigation led to the discovery that there was another suspect connected to the scene. On June 29, 2018, the Albuquerque Police Department announced a fourth unidentified male suspect was being sought in connection to the case based on DNA evidence recovered from the scene. The case of Victoria Martins is a heart-wrenching tragedy that shook the city of Albuquerque and captured national attention. The brutal murder of this innocent 10-year-old girl sent shockwaves through the community and raised questions about the child welfare system, law enforcement, and the criminal justice system. The details of the case are both disturbing and heartbreaking, and the subsequent investigation and trials revealed shocking new information. This case highlights the importance of protecting our children and the devastating consequences when they fall through the cracks of the system. Early Life Victoria Martins, a young girl from Albuquerque, was born on August 23, 2006, and attended Petroglyph Elementary School. She lived with her mother. Despite her mother, Michelle Martins, having no prior criminal record in New Mexico, she admitted to authorities that she would use online platforms to seek out men to sexually abuse her and her two children, including Victoria, for her own pleasure. The New Mexico Children, Youth, and Families Department received multiple calls from Michelle Martins herself about the household, starting in 2015. Michelle Martins met her boyfriend, Fabian Gonzalez, on a dating service called Plenty of Fish, Michelle Martin and Fabian Gonzalez began dating each other. Michelle would often call Gonzalez to her house, where they would commit some of the most atrocious and vile things to each other and Michelle's kids. Michelle was a nymphomaniac and sexual sadist. She derived her pleasure from extreme torture and beating of herself and her younger kids. One of the kid was Victoria. Both the children go through trauma that no one should ever go through. Jessica Kelly, Gonzalez's cousin, also joined them in their evil deeds. All three of them started to abuse Victoria. Jessica Kelly had only been released from prison four days prior to the murder. Just after one month of Michelle and Gonzalez's meeting, the incident took place. Victoria had just celebrated her 10th birthday on the day she was brutally murdered. According to eyewitnesses, Jessica Kelly was seen carrying the young girl to her apartment at around 10 p.m. that night. It is believed that Victoria was lured into the apartment with the promise of a party, but instead, she was subjected to unspeakable acts of violence. Neighbors reported hearing screams coming from the apartment late that night, but no one thought to call the police. It wasn't until the following morning that Michelle Martins and Fabian Gonzalez who were in the apartment at the time of the murder, reported to neighbors that Jessica Kelly had attacked them with an iron. 
It was then that police were finally called to the scene. As officers entered the apartment building, they were met with smoke emanating from behind a closed bathroom door. They soon discovered that the source of the smoke was a burning blanket, which had been used to partially wrap Victoria's dismembered body. The little girl had been sexually assaulted, strangled, and stabbed multiple times. She had also been given drugs and alcohol before being killed. The murder of Victoria Martins was a senseless and brutal act that shocked the entire community. It was later revealed that Michelle Martins had allegedly arranged for her daughter to be sexually assaulted by multiple men as a birthday present. The investigation into the murder is ongoing, and all three individuals involved have been charged with numerous crimes, including murder, child abuse, and tampering with evidence. Michelle Martins, Fabian Gonzalez, and Jessica Kelly were arrested and charged with the murder of Victoria Martins. They were held on a $1 million cash-only bond and arraigned on September 16, 2016. Prosecutors asked the court to try them separately, and the motion was granted in June 2017. They each pleaded not guilty. Michelle Martins accepted a plea bargain to one count of child abuse, resulting in death. During a press conference, the Albuquerque Police Department announced that a fourth unidentified male suspect was sought in relation to the death of Victoria Martins, based on unknown DNA evidence recovered from the scene. According to District Attorney Raul Torres, Martins and Gonzalez were not present when the murder and rape occurred. Nine charges against Fabian Gonzalez, including second-degree murder and criminal sexual penetration, were dropped. Gonzalez was found guilty of child abuse, resulting in death and tampering with evidence. Michelle Martins is believed to have falsely confessed to actively participating in the murder. The plea bargain guarantees Martins will face 12 to 15 years in prison, and she will be sentenced after the conclusion of Gonzalez and Kelly's trials. The trials of Gonzalez and Kelly were postponed until 2022. According to a report by the Civilian Police Oversight Agency, CPOA, a spokesperson from the Albuquerque Police Department was found to have lied to the Albuquerque Journal regarding the department's response to a referral from the Children, Youth, and Families Department, CUFT, about Victoria Martins prior to her death. The report revealed that the police department did receive referrals but did not investigate them. Two police spokespersons later falsely claimed that the referrals were investigated, but the investigation found that they had fabricated details. The CPOA recommended a two-week suspension for the officer, but the police chief reduced it to one day, leading to a disagreement between the CPOA and the police department. The case will now be reviewed by an independent monitor overseeing the police department's reform. The case of Victoria Martins shook the nation, leaving many wondering how such a heinous crime could occur in our society. The details of her murder were truly shocking, and they serve as a stark reminder of the dangers that children can face even in their own homes. This tragedy underscores the importance of being vigilant and proactive in protecting the most vulnerable among us. The loss of a child is always devastating, and Victoria's family was left to grieve the loss of their beloved daughter, niece, and granddaughter. The community rallied around them, offering support and prayers during this difficult time. But even as they tried to come to terms with their loss, they were forced to endure the long and painful process of seeking justice for Victoria. The investigation into Victoria's murder was lengthy and complex, involving multiple suspects and a range of charges. The perpetrators of this terrible crime were ultimately brought to justice, but the fact remains that a young girl lost her life in a senseless act of violence. This tragedy serves as a reminder that we must do more to protect children from harm, particularly those who are at risk of abuse and neglect. The impact of Victoria's death extends beyond her family and community. It has forced many to confront the harsh reality of child abuse and the damage it can inflict on young lives. 
It has prompted calls for increased funding and support for programs aimed at protecting children and for greater awareness of the signs of abuse and neglect. While we cannot undo the harm that has been done, we can honor Victoria's memory by working to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. We can advocate for stronger laws to protect children, support organizations that work to prevent child abuse and neglect, and be vigilant in reporting any suspected abuse or neglect to authorities. Victoria's life was cut tragically short, but her memory will live on. As a society, we must do more to ensure that all children have the chance to grow up safe and healthy, surrounded by love and support. May Victoria rest in peace, and may her legacy inspire us all to be better advocates when we see something not right. Have you ever spotted a child you think was in a similar danger? We would love to hear from you. See you in the next one.